Thursday, February 21st. Uh, <clears throat> select board meeting, regular scheduled select board meeting to order. Um, I'm Brad Town to my far right, uh, far left is Pete Kelly. Wayne Lamberton to my right, Jeremy Hansen, Angelina Capron. Also with us is Dana Hadley and our treasurer, Diane Isabel. Additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? Yes, I'd like to add, ask the liquor board to convene, please. That's all. Um, treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Oh, wait I, a minute. My mistake. Yeah. Public comment. Hearing none. Now, now. Okay. Okay. Um, I've given the select board the January trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent tax report. Uh, a program that we're in, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, uh, is the asset forfeiture program through the DEA, Department of Justice, that the police are involved in. In, in July, we started using them, and I'm the one that has to be the administrator because I'm the treasurer. So what I do is I set up the police, the ones that can report into the system, and then they report uh, and they get asked questions, whatever, by the Department of Justice. And we can get money back from that. So what we've done so far is we've had three different incidents that we've been able to use this on, and we have a total right now of that we've claimed of 14987 of which we can get 80% uh, of it. So we're looking at getting back about 11989 you know, approximately. They might have issues where I might get a little bit less. However, we've started getting the money in. Uh, we started the program in July, and February is when we started getting the money. Okay, so we've gotten one so far. So I want to make you aware that, you know, that is it's working the way it's supposed to be working. But, um, you know, sometimes there's, I have some questions on it. I've never done this before. So I am asking the auditor about some of the items that I might have to, because I know I have to set up separate um, revenue accounts and expenditure accounts. But what I wanted to make you aware of as a select board is some of the, uh, one of the rules that they have here. And this is from the, you know, from the DEA. And it says, ensure the law enforcement agency head or de designee authorizes all expenditures from the sharing accounts. And then on top of that, to obtain approval for expenditures from the governing body, such as the town council. So just to make you aware, when uh, Chief Wolf has expenditures that he wants to expend, then have to bring them here and get approval from you. So I wanted to make you aware that that should be happening when he starts making the expenditures. I'm also going to have the chief come in and talk to you directly rather than go through me. Right. Because um, it's very specific. <clears throat> it's very you know, specific. What you can what do, you and can. I want to make sure we're always in compliance. And these are funds from uh, drug arrests and yes. things like that. Yes. Yeah. So there, there are rules as to what you can spend the money on. Um, there, there are, but they're, they're, they're vague. They tend to be vague in this explanation. So I just want to make certain that we're all very comfortable with what they are. And like I say, I've also asked the auditors to try to give us some help if they can. Just want to make sure that we are completely in compliance at all times. I think we really need to have a formal program mm -hmm. on it yeah. because it's <laughs> tricky. Yeah, well, it's for the federal government as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is this police revenue that we budgeted for, or is this in no. addition? No, this would be in addition. This is totally separate. You mm -hmm. never know what you're going to get on this. Hmm. These are drug seizures. So does it does it give you any thing on what the money can be used for, or it just has to be for law enforcement? or? Um, I, think it ha I think it has to be for law enforcement, but it's really vague, and that's why I'm looking for maybe to find more information that's a little more uh, detailed. That's all I've got. Um, okay, letters received regarding opposition to snowmobile ordinance, Nina? Yes, um, and Ken is here. And we received two letters, one from, and I've sent it to you in your packet. Um, as you know, you did the ordinance on January 3rd. And by law, we printed in the paper that um, what had happened and that people who had objections um, could either um, go through the referendum procedure, the permissive res referendum, which is getting 5% of the voters of the town um, a petition to have a special town meeting to vote on the ordinance. Or um, the other thing that I suggested to Ken was for him to write you letters, which um, there were two letters. One was from Ken and one was from Corey. 
Is that your son? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Ken wanted to have an opportunity to talk to you about the snowmobile ordinance. Come on up. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, basically, I can see no upside to allowing snowmobiles to use that portion of the road. One, I believe it's a uh, safety hazard. Uh, anywhere a snowmobile goes out in the road, they are an uninsured vehicle. They're sharing the road or technically going on the same road as insured vehicles are. If an accident should occur and you have that narrow bridge out here, uh, which is rather icy a lot of the times just because of water puddles right on the edges of that, snowmobiles certainly <coughs> aren't going to improve that situation. I can see absolutely no upside to the town of Berlin or me as a taxpayer by allowing them to use that portion of the road. Second off, where are they going to go from that point? They're, the original notice that was posted, they wanted to go up around Black Road and down Brookfield Road, which, from what I understand, they did not get clearance to do that. No. But at, my fear is, it's like eating an elephant. You take it one small bite at a time. Next year, they're going to come back before the same board and say, well, uh, we'd like to petition the board to use sections of Black Road or of Brookfield Road. There is no way they can go anywhere, from my understanding, other than across this field to what? Montpelier has said they're not going to allow them to use their property. Uh, my understanding, my, I wasn't able to attend the other meeting. My son was. He tells me the majority of the people who were at that meeting were opposed to it. The chief of police was opposed to it. The road commissioner was opposed to it. I don't understand why it was approved. I would, I would really like, like an answer on that. I, I see no upside to the town of Berlin from a liability and a cost standpoint <coughs> to see a whole lot of downside. Well, if we approved it because the snowmobiles to connect their trails have to take and have a way under the or over the throughway. And this well, I don't see that as the town of Berlin's problem. Well, again, we're not exclusionary here. We like to take and have everybody have a chance to go through town. Uh, but isn't it isn't the reason for this board to serve the, the residents of Berlin? Uh, our tax dollars pay for road repairs, we pay for the law enforcement. If the road commissioner doesn't like that, the chief of police doesn't want it. But the, doesn't doesn't that kind of well, uh, send you know, a message? A lot of that option uh, opposition was on the Black Road and uh, on the other roads. Brookfield. Yeah, Brook, on the Brookfield roads. The, that I don't think makes any sense. The other thing, every year this has to be reviewed. Every year. Yeah. So what we did, because that first meeting there was a lot of opposition, there was a lot of people. Then the next three meetings there was no opposition, there was still a fair number of snowmobilers. And I think like Brad is saying, what we tried to do for them was to allow them a way to just get under that highway. No Black Road, no Blue Creel Road, and the rest of that has to be on private property. Yeah, well, I can tell you right now, my property cuts the only route they can take to get over without going down Black Road. They are not crossing my property. So you know, they're not going that's to their problem then. <laughs> and Earl Emerson, which is a neighbor, yeah. feels the same way. I just, I, I can't understand how you as a board can go against. I've been, I, I worked for the first meeting. I worked nights. Uh, I wasn't able to be here. I have to schedule a day off weeks in advance. The other meetings I wasn't even aware of. Uh, I, I just, I, I always thought a select board was supposed to promote the wishes of all of the people. I understand the Snowmobile Club is the Barrie Town Snowmobile Club, 
they're for the most part not residents even of Berlin. They want to play. We have to pay. That's what upsets me. Not to mention the liability issue. What happens if I'm coming home from work some night and a snowmobile pulls out right out here and I hit them? Okay? Somebody is gonna somebody's gonna have to pay. They're gonna they're gonna they can't sue the snowmobiler, obviously. They have no insurance. They're not required. But, yes, to yes, you have to have you insurance cannot, to go on vast trails. You cannot go on vast trails without insurance. I, the okay. Here's, here's mm -hmm. the other problem. I allowed vast once before to use my property. I went down, we posted out an area for them. We marked that. I even took chainsaw and my small bulldozer and I cleared a path for them. They went all over the place. They did not stay on the trail that was marked out. They threw stuff all over the property. I found cans, you name it, thrown out on my property. That's the reason they will never use my property again. I will not allow them to cross it, period. Well, I, I think it's the feeling of the board if the owners do not give them permission, I don't think they'll use the road because there's no place to go. If they do abuse it, next year, we can say to them, we gave you that opportunity. Another thing to keep in mind that this ordinance was in place, what, less than two years ago? <coughs> we, Not even. We, we, didn't just, have we just removed it. It wasn't removed for a year. So they, they could have done this anyways, and it was basically house cleaning, I believe, because nobody was doing it. No, nobody was using the roads. So we sort of took it off the books. Murphy's Law, six or seven months later, it comes back. The ordinance is posted now. There's an ordinance there that allows people to help determine things. But I thought it was rather risky, the amount of time, money, and energy, whatever the snowmobile group is, whether it's the Thunder Chickens or private use, they can lose that if they abuse it. So that, that still doesn't, doesn't answer my question of what happens if an automobile hits a snowmobile or out on, this is what a class two road out here, uh, three. But then, yeah. okay, then yeah. this is class, I thought dirt, only dirt roads were class three. No. no. Well, my okay. answer was the same thing that would have happened six months ago, or eight months ago, before we, we removed the ordinance. This isn't like something brand new, a brand new risk. In fact, I mean, I think snowmobiles have had permission to run on those. The consequences of that, what are you, are you drunk? Oh, who knows? I mean, there's so many uh, things you might have to throw into that question. Is it just purely an accident? Is there somebody going too fast? I mean, you don't believe that the, the town, by authorizing the use, stands any liability at all? It's the same liability we've always had. As yeah. I say, we just removed this. We just removed that ordinance not a year ago. I don't think that we're subjecting ourselves to any more. You know, I have never ridden a, mo a, a snowmobile, and I have no interest in it. There was a lot of people here from Berlin that wanted that path, that wanted the opportunity to at least try that. They were. We were here. That's why we voted on uh, it. I have a copy of the minutes that I received on that first meeting. In the first was, meeting. It's hard to attend other meetings when you're not aware of them. No. Uh, and it's also hard to attend them when you work evenings. Uh, I just... I really see no upside for the town of Berlin. I see only liability issues. I see problems with roads. But anywhere they cross a road, they pull snow out into the road, and it freezes into a hard path. Uh, it causes wear and tear on the roads. It causes police enforcement. I mean, we have to pay for police officers if there is something. Uh, we, we pay the bills for that as well. I see no upside to this in town of Berlin. I just, I mean, I, I'm having, normally when a town does something, it's for the benefit of the people of the town. I don't see any benefit to the people of the town for this. Yeah, I guess I just have to keep falling back. This has been in place. We haven't been sued. The roads, they run across Route 302 down by the railroad tracks all winter long. I don't see snow there. 
we haven't had an accident there in the 40 years I've lived here with a snowmobile. I mean, if we're going to be afraid of every little thing, we would never do anything. They also don't have a very narrow bridge out here that is already icy. Well, we, uh, we, we said that we would put an ordinance in place so that we could open up 100 yards out here to get under the interstate. If they can't get trails on private property uh, on right. either side of it, they're not going to use it. They can't go anywhere, and you're not going to give them permission, so where are they going to go? Right. Well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see that that I, I don't I, think I, a I lot just... of people will give them permission. I, I don't think they will get it. Or they would have had it already. They wouldn't have had to come here. I, like I said, I, I, I did that once. And all it was, was it was abuse, totally. Mm -hmm. And when I called a bass, I can't remember his name. I, I sure. cannot find the paperwork any longer because <coughs> it was 20 years ago. But when I called him to complain, he said, well, you can't expect us to control every snowmobiler that mm -hmm. chooses to ride on our trails. And that was the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's why the land has been closed to snowmobilers and always will be. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I agree with you 100%, and if that happens, I don't see anyone on this board saying, geez, we're going to let you continue to do that. But as Wayne pointed out, they have a long, long way to go before they're even going to be using this little stretch of road because it just dead ends there at, I believe, the Lawrence property. Right. Uh, Pain turn by south. Oh, Josh Josh Walker. Walker. Yeah. Okay. And there's no, no place to go. Well, they're, they're certainly not, not going across my property. I don't think I you're think. the only one. I, I uh, believe that they're going to hit a brick wall, and we've given them the opportunity, every chance to get under that highway, uh, in all fairness to them, and, and see what happens. You know, I, I just hope nothing adverse does happen, because either way I'm going to end up paying it. But I can see, I know what's happened up north, where they have sued, people have sued over these issues, uh, where a snowmobile collided with an automobile in a town road. Uh, and either way, taxpayers end up paying for it. And I don't like the thought of that, I'll be very honest with you. I think our taxes are more than high enough as they already stand. And I, I, I see no benefit. These people are not taxpayers to the town of Berlin. They're not spending any money or doing anything to enhance the town of Berlin. That may be questionable. Okay, where, other than Maplewood, where they stop to get gas, uh, food, uh, drink, whatever else, what, what are they doing to enhance the town of Berlin? Well, well I mean, like, no. what is anybody doing that passes through Vermont and stops in and buys some gas and a Coke? And then goes down our highway and slides off the road in their car for driving too fast and sues the state. Or the town. I understand, but those are legal vehicles meant to travel on public highways. Mm -hmm. A snowmobile is not. It is not a registered vehicle meant to travel on a public highway. They simply are not. They don't carry the same liability issues. They don't carry the same insurance issues. Uh, I, I just, and I, I know they're supposed to do this, they're supposed to do that, but the abuses happen all the time. In the worst, everybody's aware of the, the parking issues over along the pond as it is now, with people uh, walking, riding bikes, half the time. Ice fishing, they park in the travel portions of the highway constantly. You, you, there's, all kinds of times you can't get two cars through side by side. You have to wait your turn because they don't park into the pole round or they don't pull far enough in. We already have issues with that. Uh, since they've, the pond's been opened, the issues have increased because there's more and more people using the pond. And it gets worse every year. And it's just going to continue to get worse. And this just adds another straw to break the camel's back. Well, I'm not sure snowmobiles go anywhere around the pond. They're, they're not going around. I'm using that as, as, as a, a statement of issue, just so you understand what I mean by 
having too many people or things using the roads now. And as I said, I can't believe that they're going to let that, I, I, I would bet anything they're going to be back here next year, especially if nothing happens this year, looking for permission to use more of the road, to use Black Road, uh, I tend to use Brookfield Road to get over there. I just don't, I don't see it ending here. And I just, I, if there is an accident out here, I, I see the liability issue is huge. Well, you know, if there had never been an ordinance, I'm not sure what Ford would have done, but we just reinstated something that's been here forever. I wasn't aware that there was an ordinance before. Nothing to that nature was posted in the paper that I ever read that there was a pre-existing ordinance. Mm -hmm. I never, I never saw anything of that nature posted anywhere. I think the ordinance was instated back in '78. I was going to say when I was here in in the '80s, when I worked for the town in the '80s, they used that road. Yes, mm -hmm. all the time. But we agreed that we don't want to let them use the road. The only piece of road we agreed that, that if they got a trail built on private property from the existing bass trail to where they want to go, they could come back and we would let them use that 100 yards of road to get under the interstate. You're saying if they got right. permission. Right. So in other words, until they get permission, they can't use the road. That's my point. That's what we've been. Again, that was not stated clearly. Well, they aren't uh, gonna, gonna unload out here and just go back and forth under the bridge. Well, no, I didn't expect they would. No, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> but there, that, that if makes a lot of difference. You're saying if, in other words, before they can use that section of the road, they have got to get permission to go they got to have a way to, they got to have a way to get to it. Right. And I think they're trying to get over to uh, Payne Mountain, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant earlier when you said you're not going to let them cross, and then that's it. Okay. Well, I'll, but, I will take you at your word on it. Yeah. The night that they were all here, the first meeting, there was quite a few people from Crosstown Road that want to be able to get off of that out through to get onto the trail system out here. I mean, there was, there was quite a few of them here from sure. Crosstown. But they got to find a way on well, private right. property. They, yeah, they, they have got some private property that they can ride on up there. Mm -hmm. Josh Walker and, and Jason. I, I border Josh Walker. Well, actually, Earl Emerson borders Josh Walker. Uh, Josh Walker doesn't go anywhere near to the top or across. No, I mean, no. they're coming from the uh, Levines and... Lamps and off of Walker Road can come out through to the Levines and then they cross cross down road and then come down on to Josh Walker's and then come down through and get down to the to out here to the interstate. Mm -hmm. but, well, we'll, but we'll connect see. with the trail over from Northfield, they have to get uh, over Northfield the owns this, a stretch. Oh, where it goes up to the old granite quarries. It, it allows no motor vehicles whatsoever up on that property. In mm -hmm. fact, my property borders up or back to part of Montpelier. Mm -hmm. uh, and my understanding is Montpelier has said, no, Correct. we're not going to use our property, period. So, so that's, the only, that's the only piece of road we talked about. Yep. Allowing. Is that 100 yards under the bridge? Yeah, well, I. For my own sake, as well as everybody else's, I hope there's not an accident. But I can I can just see it happening because you come around from the interstate, that corner is generally plowed up rather high. It's kind of blind. They're they're going to have to. Well, from here, what well, I assume they're going to have to cross on the left hand side. Either that, or they're going to. Are they going to cross on the right hand side going under the interstate? Uh, there's a stop the sign, there's a sign in the way to cross on the left. Uh, on the right, the way the banks are, I, I don't see how, unless they go all the way down the road. We'll cross that bridge when they have a trail. But even once they're across the bridge or across the culverts, they go on to uh, Tom Willard's land. 
he gave them permission to ride on his. Okay. So then they just come back onto the curb, under the throughway, and then they go up into the Again, ledges. That's, mm -hmm. that's one question. Which side of the curb? Which, mm -hmm. I mean, come, does your, if you're coming down Brookfield Road, and they're coming on the left side going from here, <coughs> if they shoot out at all, they're going to shoot right out into, into cars. Well, that's for them to take and decide. But right now, the uh, the ordinance is as it states, just to get them under the over the water and under the bridge. It's no roads other than that. Just cross town a little bit of uh, the start of the Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of the start of the Brookfield Road, and they cut through the ledges into uh, uh, Justin uh, Lawrence's. Lawrence's. But there's no talk of Black Road. There's no talk of any of the other roads up the, around the pond. Okay. Well, we'll I'll, I'll keep holding yeah. my breath and see what happens. We all will. <laughs> we are here. I just, I don't like the liability issues if something should happen because sure as, sure as crap, if they do, they're going to try to sue the town. Yeah. Well, I mean, the snowmobiles through VAST, through the state registration process, have, they have to maintain a, the same insurance as a car does. And that's one of the reasons it's so expensive to own a snowmobile on vast trails. The, um, as far as the registration, all snowmobiles have to be registered, that go on vast trails have to be registered through the state of Vermont. Yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, or they're supposed to be, let's put it that way. Well, it's the same thing with automobiles. There's a lot of <laughs> well, them out there that aren't registered. No, exactly. You're absolutely right, but here's the same difference again. An automobile, automobile is an approved vehicle for the road. Snowmobiles are not. They do not have directionals. Uh, well, they're, they're not going to ride on the road. They're only going to ride this little bit out here by the culvert on the road, and then they're going to be up on the bank. Well, last I knew, that was they have the, They have the legal right to cross a highway. To cross it, yes. Yes, and that's all they're going to do on when they go across the end of the pond out there and go on to Jason Lawrence's land it's just going to go straight across they're, they're the going straight across they yeah. are riding on the road they have to out here they can't get across yeah, just that the little bit yeah. again that is on the road uh i'm not trying to pick straws but it, it appears that that's what seems to happen is people pick straws well that is on the road I mean, unless i missed my guess yeah but it's been that way since what you say 78 in the it, 70s it's not new it's been going on forever as long as snowmobiles have been around you know, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll hold my peace until yeah. i see you uh, uh but again i mean they're not going to take and even bother to, to to do anything out here on this road until they get permission to get to where they want to be and as you say, if you're not going to give permission and they can't get across Montpelier's land, it's kind of a moot point. Right. You know, I, I hope that's the case, yeah. but that's, that's all I have to say. Yep. I thank you for allowing me the time to address yeah. you. Yeah, we, Glad to have you come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Chris, Chris Revit, Dubois in King Town Office in the Highway Department Stormwater Plan. Yep. Yeah. I'll talk first. I'm actually Pam D'Andrea from uh, remember Pam. Central oh, yeah. Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And I don't know if you guys remember, we did a stormwater master plan for the come town. On, come right on. Come on. And um, yeah, I'll let Chris sit here because I'm not going to talk long. There. <laughs> so I did. We did a at CBRPC. We did a stormwater master plan and. Um, had, five, the five, yeah. five sites were chosen to um, further into design, and I managed to, Dana and I worked together, and I said, Dana, would you like me to get a grant for any one of these? And uh, we thought we'd start with the town office, since it's mm -hmm. municipally owned property, it was relatively straightforward project, one landowner, um, <coughs> and I was able to put it through a block grant program that we have now. And um, town pays a 20% match, which you folks approved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So this, we're at the, what we call, we had a 60% phase of the design that Chris's firm, Dubon King, um, did. And then we, we met with Dana, had some discussion 
forward it to the 90% design. And so we're here to present that tonight for you and get your approval to Keep moving forward. move it to 100%. <laughs> and then once it culminates 100%, we have a final report that'll put you folks in the position to let me help you to get um, a grant for implementation, which... Right now, this is the plan this for what plan. will happen. What would happen yeah. later. Yeah. And the nice thing I've heard in terms of the future um, situation with the block grants, no more mandatory match. So <laughs> we may be able to get this done. Well, that's quite out. attractive. I yeah. know. <laughs> haven't seen. I haven't seen the uh, RFP yet from the state, but that's that's what people are telling me. So. It still can be competitive like the other grant programs. You know, some folks will put in a little match here and there. But Was in-kind eligible yes, for yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And in-kind is eligible. Yeah. So with that, um, and I think timing, we're going to be wrapping this up within the next few months. And um, we'll have a, we'll, the, there's a grant round. Unfortunately, this won't be ready for the next grant round, which is in two weeks. So. Um, but we'll get you on the next one, or whenever this block grant thing comes out as well. So, Great. go ahead, right. Chris. Thank you. All right. So, these are this is a large larger set of what you have in front of you. In in case uh, you want to try and look at that, um, the first page here is pretty straightforward. It's what's out here now um, in the parking area and the town garages. Uh, the biggest thing that we had to worry about in terms of our design was the uh, water line that goes along the south and east end of the park or south and west end of the parking lot. Um, on this plan it's actually in blue and your black and white plans it's not on there. It's this here. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of having to work around that a little bit um, but I think we figured out a, de a good way to work around that. Um, the point of this is to treat the, the impervious area so the pavement and gravel areas out here, uh, the uh, there's a permit coming out or a stormwater rule coming out in 2018. No, 2019. Sorry, Any day we're in 2019. It was supposed. To, yeah, it was supposed to be last year, um, but it, it's actually in rulemaking now uh, with the legislature, and they actually they were supposed to look at it at the end of January, and it looks like they postponed it to the end of February now. The yes, committee. Um, we um, met with the stormwater folks actually on Tuesday, and I think they're going to be, it's going to be put out either tomorrow or next week, so. Oh, it will be. Yeah, okay. so probably Good. probably by the end of next week it'll be. And this um, was going to take effect sometime in the future, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it'll take effect. Um, once it goes to rulemaking, the state will, the state, uh, stormwater program will have to write a general permit for it and the new rule is um, it has to do with three acre sites so it's any site that um, has three or more acres of impervious that has never been permitted for stormwater treatment and they'll have to go back and retrofit some type of stormwater treatment um, for impervious surfaces uh, and they'll have to treat a certain amount of it in this case the way the rule is written now it's 50% will have to be treated. Um, so moving on to our proposed condition, what we've proposed treats um, in, in terms of uh, a stormwater pond, uh, some just filtering areas uh, using some of the existing wooded areas and actually reducing some of the gravel areas um, we treat about 56% of the impervious surfaces. Uh, we will start, which way am I looking here? We'll start with the southern section out by the ice rink. Um, currently, it seems that stormwater flows from east to west, straight, uh, straight down the parking lot this way. And it'll just run off across the road, either into this culvert over here or just down the bank into the river. Um, what we're proposing to do is capture a bit of that with um, a swale, a small depression here with a culvert across into what, we're, what we have proposed as a uh, subsurface gravel wetland. Um, so basically the base of this will be um, 
be some topsoil with a little bit of pea stone and then two feet of gravel underneath. So water will percolate through the soil into the gravel. It'll run through it and will eventually discharge into an outlet structure, which we're going to propose outlets right at the, the existing culvert um, up here on the west end, just, be, just below Shed Road. Um, and this will capture quite a bit of the town office parking lot, maybe not some of the stuff in the back that might run off uh, this direction here. Um, the one thing that, I, that we have um, proposed for the actual parking area, we'll have to um, excavate the area uh, for that culvert anyway. Um, so we're thinking in order just to um, convey that water so, so it doesn't travel straight down Shed Road across the way it does now. Just to put a tiny little diversion bar, maybe call it a speed bump if you want, um, it would be about three to four inches I think. I don't think it would be anything too too massive. Um, but just put that out there and that'll actually help direct some of that water um, to help capture it. Um, those? Yeah. So ahead. we're directing all that water to those subsurface capture zones. Yeah. Did they ever like clog up with silt and dirt where in 15 years we're going to put all that water into something that won't hold anything? Um, a lot of the sediment and stuff should get captured within the topsoil itself. Okay. Um, so it should just be water and um, whatever nutrients the water is, so or whatever. Like so the, the top acts as a filter. Yeah. So you may have to go in and uh, excavate out some of the sediment and yeah. things to get down to the topsoil and replace that. But I would think we um, would not need to excavate all three feet that's going to that's gonna be under there. So what's that, what would be the operation and maintenance around uh, that? Like how often, like every couple of years or something it, like it might that be every couple of years uh, the, the four bay itself so this little triangular section here initially everything's going to run into here and, and that'll remove most of the sediment in larger storms we'll probably get some that uh, travels into into yeah. the main bays so um, really it's just about looking at the four bay for for sediment removal yeah. and um, we'll provide a maintenance plan uh, you know yeah. i don't think i do we include that yet I think we put it together, but we didn't include it in our report. I don't grade. think it's in the 90%, no, I, but we're going to need that for the yeah, 100% because I, I have to have, have yeah, yeah, I have okay. to have an hour we have, to yeah. Yeah, further Yeah, we have it. started it. We have started it. I, okay. it just, uh, I right. just didn't make it into this. Yeah. Um, basically, on a semi-annual to annual basis, you would inspect each of these, and depending on how much, we'll kind of give you a range of you know, how deep that sediment will be before you start to excavate it out. So usually it's, go ahead, sorry. So the, if you look at the detail in the outlet structure, so yep. that, the, the, the perforated pipe, that's perforated pipe, right? The, yes, the pipe beneath. The cat. Yeah. Yep. So that's basically the leach field that's bringing the water to the structure. It is, so the way, so the way it's designed, if you look at the, um, the uh, plan the sheet. schematic with mm -hmm. the plan. It, uh, we basically take, so water will run into this perforated pipe here, right. but it's cut off um, moving from north to south. Mm -hmm. So it actually has to run at least this 20 to 25 feet through the gravel before it hits another perforated section. I see. Yeah. And then it'll go through a solid pipe underneath the berm in the middle, hit the perforated, it should spread out and move through the second set of gravel until it hits the perforations at the end here, right. which will run into the structure. So the only time that you'd ever get water to go over the grate in the structure would be a catastrophic yeah. event. You're looking at, um, I think it's we have a, if, if you're looking at the structure, there's a, another small orifice, mm -hmm. six inch tall. Uh, that's, that'll run you at the 10 year storm, yeah, which, -year which is storm. about, um, I think it's two and a half, two to three inches, two and a half to three inch, uh, rainfall I'm in 24 the hours. Maintenance. The maintenance would be that after you've had one of those, you clean the structure. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, there'll be regular uh, operations and maintenance that'll need to be done. It's, it's a lot of inspection, and then when you notice that uh, you know sediment should be cleaned out, or 
you're looking for maybe cracks in a structure or something like that. I, I find it hard to believe, you know, that would take many years, but uh, those are the types of things you would look for. And what is, what is generally the life of it? Would be, is that 10 to 20 years or what is the, yeah. is that about right? I would imagine it's about 20 years at okay. least. So uh, 20 years, what would you have to do? Go in there and dig everything out and just redo it? Um, maybe the structures. I think as long as uh, regular maintenance is done to the wetland itself, um, that may hold. You know, you may have some great, some grading erosion issues. Um, you know, if, if you have some catastrophic storm, uh, as Wayne put it, uh, you may have some erosion issues that you might have to deal with. But I think as long as it's well maintained, it, it should work for for many years. Um, and then you're just looking for erosion around around your structures, any movement or anything like that that would have to be repaired. Um, before I move on, is there about, any additional? Do you want to talk yeah. about the filter strip? Yep, I was just going to make sure make sure. there were no other questions regarding that. The get under shed road with the discharge pipe, were you just want to uh, bore it or? Uh, nope, there's an existing culvert discharge. There? There's an existing culvert and we're actually going to outlet right in front of it in the same um, okay. depression that it's in. So we'll outlet it there and hopefully, you know, it'll go right into the, the, the other structure or the other culvert. It's kind of squished in at the top of that page there. Yep. Any additional questions about the gravel outlet? Okay. Uh, moving on to the northern section of the site. Uh, this one's a little less intensive in terms of uh, construction and cost. Um, basically, with this area, I'd rather not. We'd rather not disturb a lot of the wooded areas to create another basin or something like that. So what um, was proposed in the 30% design, and, and we've continued with is adding a small filter strip along the edge of the along the edge of what's there. Um, it'd be about 10 feet from the edge from the edge of gravel right now um, and just turn that into vegetation. Um, basically that would help filter any uh, nutrients or sediment, anything like that. Um, right at the beginning of that you'll see that we have a two foot stone diaphragm um, to meet stormwater rule so if if we ever do have to go ahead and permit this under the three acre rule there's a there's a certain length that water has to travel it's 75 feet across here that you could just send it into an open field and it would be fine um, they consider more than 75 feet where you're <coughs> going to get some channeling of, of water and such so the stone diaphragm actually helps capture that and spread out all the water so it flows a little more evenly um, through this vegetated area. Um, so what we have is that stone diaphragm, which is two feet wide, one foot deep, of just three quarter inch to one and a half inch stone. Um, and then just building a little vegetated strip within what's already gravel. The rest of it is actually using what's existing beyond that. Um, that woody vegetation that's that's already out there, uh, we can consider that as long as we have the distance. Um, which here, we need a minimum of 65 to meet uh, stormwater rules. And um, so, basically, the area I've shown, even at that thinnest area uh, where I have the dimension called out, is about 70 feet, I think. But we would need a, a 65 foot minimum there. Uh, just so we can show that you know we're going to meet the treatment requirement um, for the stormwater. Did you say re refresh my memory? But you, yep. um, it was a certain percentage that you were addressing. It was fifty-six percent. Is that what fifty-six percent? So yes. So between the two practices, we address about fifty-six percent of all the impervious on. Uh, between the two sites, between the town offices and the um, and the highway, to and the, garage. The highway okay. to the garage, uh, there's about three three point one acres total of impervious 
that we've, um, you know, that's been delineated uh, for these plans uh, that we can tell. And based on our calculations, we're capturing about almost 1.7 acres. It's just shy of 1.7 acres, mm -hmm. so just over half. And then we reduce, so we, like I sh um, show here, there's a little bit of reduction. We instead of having having a more defined road there, we can um, uh, make it grass we, instead of gravel, and we can count that as a reduction of impervious, mm -hmm. which counts towards that 50% that we would need to treat. As you know, I wasn't thrilled with the 50 something percent. I wanted it yes. to be more right. higher. Which yes. would require, um, because there's a, a drainage, you know, it's going to, some of the drainage goes that way, so it would yeah. actually require some other retrofit. So going here's the other question, way to get if you had a similar. crystal ball, which I know you don't, but right. how long when is the state is satisfied with 56%? Yes, because mm -hmm. it's 50%. What does it have to be for a minimum for the state, do you know? 50%. 50. 50. Okay. Yeah. Um, any idea of how long that will be, or? You mean, will they change their mind, Dana? Yeah. Is that what you're wondering? Yeah, I, don't, I know you don't have an answer, but. <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball about that. Um, given that, given that this is, you know, this rule has taken quite a few years to get through the legislature. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to come out last year. It's coming out any day now. Um, for them to increase that 50 percent is going to be you think that's unlikely i think that's pretty unlikely yeah, that I, that would I happen i think so too okay. um uh, think about they have to address they have to permit every three acre impervious site through this whole okay. state you know and so for them to require more than a 50 percent treatment of those sites I, a lot. Yeah, okay. a lot of these I, sites I may really, may be very really, restricted. Well, my know, point really was, it was area. you know, we really yeah. weren't that much over the fifty percent. Right. That was my point. Yeah, yeah. and I know that was a concern years last time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it came down that road years five to ten years from now, which I really doubt it will. Mm -hmm. You know, you never say never. You never know what's going to happen. Of course, but there would be opportunities to do other kinds of things over here and we would go yeah, down we, that we, we would go, go down that just, I don't want you guys to would, spend money that you don't have to mm -hmm. until you have to for, so for design so if we you know, had we could to go we down could do ride. additional things yeah we I mean it, yeah. it would be it would be down it on this somewhere, side somewhere over here of the property maybe, maybe over, over here oh, over here yeah you could try and grade something to come into this pond around here but that's a lot of extra mm -hmm. excavation yeah. that you may not want to do at this right. at this moment so you know we would we if that Which happened we could go do. back to the design <laughs> table we could go back to short answer is they're going to be chasing a lot of people for the next yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> right. we're, we're close <laughs> yeah uh, i made my being point on the, thank you, you did. Being on the very <laughs> point well made yeah. and um, being on the winooski river and right. and lake champlain being the priority you're going to be we're doing things the sooner than <laughs> yeah sooner and, than a lot you of know, others just, just, it becomes legislation very soon but in terms of the rollout of the rule and they don't even have a list of all the properties at this point that's um, coming I mean they know we know that this is three acre impervious surface because we did the stormwater master plan you know but you know there's a lot of properties out there that they don't even know whether they're gonna go under this rule until the state tells them you you you, yep. you were under it so Chris, is what more do you have to do to complete this plan? Uh, I don't think there's a heck of a lot more to do. Um, it's pretty close, just some minor detail stuff that we have to do and, and uh, some minor details we have in the report that need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then specifications for actual construction. Right. Uh, the construction front end documents and right. yeah. uh, okay. technical yeah. so specifications. The do the yeah. documents and all that. Sure. There is a um, cost schedule in the report that you, I don't know if you guys got saw. I don't know the if they have that. So, okay, yeah. so there was a, a report. That was um, the preliminary report. That, this is the ninety percent that. This um, yeah, Chris you saw the together. six. Dana has this, but just yeah, um, I did not give them that. That's okay. It's just so you know, because <laughs> I always want to know about money. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sure you guys do too. Um, I can just even pass around my copy of it, but the, um, correct me if I'm wrong, and you're going to have to explain <coughs> plug option versus seat option, of course, because I forgot already. Um, I actually have to. I actually what? wrote you a paragraph for you that. You did? I did, in the cost-benefit section. I know. Um, but anyway, of course, I didn't have time to read that today. Um, That's okay. The total, the total cost for the project, there's two options. Plug option, $78,200. But don't scream. You guys, I'm going to get you a grant. Um, <laughs> and the seed option, 59200 So he'll explain the difference between the two, but I'll pass that around to you guys so in um, in looking at this the 30 percent design uh, which was done by watershed consulting they provided an option to do wetland plugs so it's a, a two inch plant plug that you would uh, put in or you can just purely okay. seed um, and the main difference is I'm gonna have to I don't have this memorized so I'm gonna have to read for my own uh, uh, section here is the uh, the seeds um, they're lower cost but they may end up getting washed away if you have a rain event soon after um, they're put in or uh, if before they take um, the plugs they they allow for quicker growth um, and they'll probably help stave off some of the uh, invasive species that you may have um, and they'll probably um, provide more erosion control right at the beginning because they'll grow a little bit quicker and, and provide more coverage faster. Um, and when they grow, when the plugs grow, it'll be more, will it be more like garden-like versus just grass, grass or what, you know, like yeah, more yeah. like perennial, mm -hmm. like perennial yeah, it'll garden be... kind of looking, but not flowers, but just more like sedges yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, there's a variety of, um, wetland plants that you can uh, put in right. and so uh, we can actually difference. we'll actually provide you and a, this a money you're finding too. is going to provide um, we and can, I, I we actually can think, try for the bigger the, the the plug option we can try I actually think you might be happy we did reach out to a, a wetland um, plant supply company yeah. and they're not eight dollars and 77 cents a piece what they're actually they? a lot less they're oh. closer to like Two or three dollars a piece. Oh, cool. um, so okay, I haven't had a chance anyway. to do the math on that yet. <laughs> we just found we just found that out this week. Um, but the difference could the, be ten thousand. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly, or even less at this at that point. Um, so there so there is that yep. for you. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know if that is a nominal cost on on over the construction, then maybe worth it to get that coverage sooner. Yeah. Well, you might end up seeding it more than once. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the. Does that uh, happen that, with some of these? What happened with one in Essex? Did you, was it uh, succeeded? Essex, no, where did you do one? We are or working something? on one in Essex. Yeah. It, it hasn't been constructed it hasn't yet. Been it's going right. through the MAB process, oh, right, so it's right. quite a long process. <laughs> right. right. Um, so slightly off topic in regards to the paved area, I've been reading a little bit about pervious. Paving or yeah, pervious yeah, paving, yeah. yes, paving. there is that. So there is that, that. Does that have any future? I mean, in you want to pay for it? Yeah. It, so it's, it's, it's expensive. Cost at this point. I think it's so. Yeah, expensive. I haven't worked with it too much <clears throat> recently, um, but yeah, there is that possibility. The other possibility, or the other thought you got to give to it is, there might be a lot of maintenance involved with it right. in, in terms of it, um, pervious pavement being plugged with sediment and salt and uh, things like yeah. that. Looked, yeah. the, looked at the Randolph Park and Ride? Yeah, it does. Is that pervious payment? Yeah, it was, that was, it was a it was first a, test. It was the first mm -hmm. test Absolutely. of it, and it, um, it, it, if you figure, it looks more like gravel now. If you figure popcorn, right, <laughs> and water goes down in the popcorn in Vermont, and it's 20 below zero, and it freezes and pops the top off, uh, that's what it, it looks more like. Oh, really? it, looks like it looks like gravel yeah, now. So not a very good idea. Well, I think, yeah. Point. I think people are, you know, people some people are going to it. it. Um, it's really nice in driveways, I think. And yeah, like they're also doing areas, it. areas, sometimes um, smaller. See if you can get us money for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they're doing a, pa a pervious paver option over at uh, Taylor Street, the uh, the new transit center that's oh, going really? in. Oh, really? 
Oh, They're doing okay. pervious pavers, so I think those are actual brick pavers that have some gravel in between so that it's actually a pervious surface that, that they've used. And, and that's less likely to get plugged. A little bit, yeah. 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 Most likely, because it's mostly pedestrian, too. Yeah. Right. But it's not cheap. I went to this workshop on, um, like, this erosion control workshop, and there was somebody there, and for how much, it's, it's pretty expensive. But. All right. The state might go in that direction. So. Maybe it will improve it in a decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions? Any other? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So, um, with your approval, we will move this to 100%. We just need the yay. We. You want them to do a motion to approve going, finishing? So they're really approving what they're. That we can bring this to 100% design if it's a. Because we're at 90%. Yeah. Now. <clears throat> Move to approve bringing the project to the 100% line. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. You have your permission. Thank you very much. So, yes, I was hoping they weren't going to say no. I don't oh, think so. the only other question is: Do we need? Do, or do you need a town permit for this? That was a question I had. I'll I speak to the, the powers. DRB. I'll speak to the powers that be. Okay. No, we don't have to go by our own rules, but we, <laughs> we, do, right? we usually do. Usually yeah. do. Yeah. So if you, um, whenever that would be, it would probably um, not happen until we would go to construction. I'll send you an email tomorrow. Right. So we, it, we wouldn't have to worry about it until we had funding for construction, I would think, sure. right? Sure. But if you, if you tell me that, then I'm going to wait until the next, you know. Millennium, so yeah. okay. I ought to do that. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. Uh, thank you, thank you everybody. Vermont uh, uh, Electric Power Company, working right away. Are you from? Yep. Right. yep. Um, we have received <laughs> an application for Velcro to work in the right away on Hill Street. Um, you've, you've gotten a copy of their application, and I'll let you speak about what you need. <clears throat> okay, I'm Sandy Fogg from Volco, and we would like to make this access road. This is taken last year. This is what we put in to get heavy equipment up into the right of way. Um, there were some ortho photos with the, the application, I think, to show you where mm -hmm. we were working. Mm -hmm. For the last six years, five years, we've been replacing aging poles in our transmission network. And so last year we had scheduled to do two up in there, and we built this by just filling in the ditch area, and then we pulled it out. Well, we didn't get the AOT permit. One of the poles uh, is near 89, and it's in the AOT right-of-way. We, it took forever to get that permit to work in the AOT right away, even though it's way uphill from the highway. So that had to be moved to this year. And rather than go in, put this down, pull it out, put it in, pull it out, we'd like to make it a permanent access point. We've already gated it up here and um, put in uh, gate locks for the neighbors. You spoke with the highway. You spoke with Tim about with Tim. it. Tim, yeah. yeah. Yes, we did this after talking to him last right, year, and, right. and we understand you you need to do ditch clearing. Well, and I was going to do some ditching over there this mm -hmm. year. So I told her that with our new policy, if they buy the culvert, well, I'm going to ditch and I'll put the culvert in there. The trouble is there's ledge there, so they're going to have to go in there and hammer. They can hammer it out for you, and, and we don't have to put the culvert in until you're ready, and we can actually leave it for you if you prefer that. But Casella will be doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, I see they but they have to hammer. Equipment. Yes. Yeah. Over by use, you know, uh -huh. there. yeah, we did 14 structures in Berlin last year. We did a whole stretch along Airport Road. Yeah. yeah. There were 11 there. So you're fine with the location? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. So I'll move to approve a permanent curb cut for this. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? <coughs> Aye. And those opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll work with you then what, about timing. Yeah. The thing is, is that they're going to probably begin sometime in April to be ready for the 
the little tiny window we have in May to do these. Oh, so it's May that you have your May is the actual for, work, yeah. but they're going to be preparing the access in April. Sandy, you're going to get a copy of this from Tom. Signed. Uh, signed. He's not here, is he? Tom, no. Okay. No. As long as mud season don't drag out like winter has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, good. Yeah. Yes, I Okay, because I have no idea. Yes, uh, we will skip to the discussion of the Green Mountain Transit route elimination. Yeah. Um, Jeremy asked me to put that on to the agenda mm -hmm. about a, uh, a change in Green Mountain Transit's service area so yeah so there was there's this is discussion more in Northfield but he hearing from people and <clears throat> having students and colleagues who who use the Green Mountain Transit line from Montpelier down to Northfield which goes through Berlin and does stop uh, if people needed to at Weston's and elsewhere uh, in Berlin um, because Northfield um, Northfield was put is now putting Green Mountain Transit money in their regular budget rather than as a special appropriation and they decided this year to cut that. Green Mountain Transit said, "Well, then we have to cut, have to cut service there." And they were, as of, I think it's as of June, they're going to discontinue that service. So I don't know that we necessarily have a role in in being a part of that, but I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of. There are Berlin residents right now, a student of mine in particular, um, who I know of firsthand, will not be able to get to class because he relies on Green Mountain Transit to get there. Yeah. And the, the ridership of that of that line, which runs a number of times per day, um, that's going to be a major problem, I think, for a lot of re Berlin residents and other folks that rely on that. Do you know how much the appropriation was? It wasn't very. It was their appropriation was their whole yeah their whole appropriation to Green Mountain Transit. I don't have in front of me. It's twenty-ish thousand. The Northfield side. Yeah. yeah. And then cutting all of it. That was that was my my read on it. And actually, at Norwich University also contributes some. <clears throat> but um, the as I understand it, there are a group of uh, folks from Northfield who will be going to town meeting, and apparently they still have some facility for doing some line item budget stuff in Northfield. Like that, we don't we don't have that here. Mm -hmm. So they're actually going to from the floor try to add that back in. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I'd be glad to contact Green Mountain Transit. We work with them yeah. fairly quick, closely and find out what their plans are. If it's and, and if there's, yeah, if they have any other you know, future plans or if there's ways that you know, we can get involved, not that, I, not that I'm suggesting that we should, you know, jack up the amount that we're necessarily contributing, but you know, these, are, these are services that our residents use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, as, as much as we, as we pay, which I think is like, Ten thousand nine twenty. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, for the amount that it's used, especially in Berlin and, and near the hospital and Shaw's and all that stuff, it's really it's really a bargain mm -hmm. for the number of people that ride it. Mm -hmm. that, that's my my estimation, anyways. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. Without cabs, cab services, it's kind of a necessity. Well, there is a so there's one cab service that run that's in Berlin that's on on Route Twelve, just south of where I am now. At, on uh, yeah, on Route 12. Um, green cab. Green cab, yeah. Six, mm -hmm. But that's a little more expensive so than a dollar a person. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's got um, she's got four or five cabs over there. Huh. Oh, she's gonna have all that. Yeah, you go get quite a few of them there when you go by yeah. at night. No, yeah, yeah, there's quite a few of them. And, and they're and they're, and they're busy. To 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're busy. So I mean, so, you know, some folks do use Uber, but you know, and um, I'm. You know, trying to get my student to graduate. Sure. <laughs> and he's got he has, he has another year left after this, and I'm you know seriously thinking like, am, am I going to be driving him home yeah. over to, over to to the this this area, Berlin Corners area? I mean, I guess I'll do it if I have to because I want to see the, see the guy graduate. But no, we have we need the bus. Though. Yes. Yeah, yes. We, we need the bus. There's no question. So, uh, you probably said, <clears throat> why are they dropping the service Northfield? Uh, to to save money on their budget. Oh, just. It's not because it's not being used or anything. Oh no, no. It's I mean, there's clear data that it's being used. Uh -huh. 
Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any else? Okay. Nope. Okay. Yep. Got to return home to the kids. Yep. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Oh, you should get a phone. Yeah. Right. You, want find, you want to find out? I can't read now. <clears throat> Well, we accept the general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G16 with checks 18893 to 18926 in the amount of $51,293.80. Payroll warrant number 19-17 for payroll from February 3rd, 2019 to February 16th, 2019 in the amount of $44,786.40. January General Journal entries and tax administration entries. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Do such a good job with that, Pete. You should do it until your, until your term is up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to let me practice a couple times sure. this afternoon. <laughs> with the are you, are you, you staying, back? right? You're not. You're leaving. No, there's, there's two. This two is the last seats. time you're going to see us. No. Well, no, Except not. <laughs> not quite so fast. <laughs> One more time. One more. Two more times. Two, two more times. Two more times. Oh yeah, three, three. Yeah. Okay. Review and recommendation of bids received the excavator and trailer. You remember we um, had bids la at the last meeting for the excavator and the equipment trailer. Um, I had sent you to remind you what the bids were that came in. Um, Tim and I have talked about this, um, and he has made recommendation for the excavator to purchase the excavator from Nortrax for 89500 This is the same machine that the town rented from them, um, and you liked it and mm -hmm. were satisfactory. Yeah, the price was fairly close, I thought, to a brand new machine. Um, there wasn't a lot of difference between the two. Why did you prefer the used machine? Well, because we used it and we knew what it was what it was like. You felt more comfortable yeah. with it. Okay. Does it have the options you wanted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's got a good warranty. So there is a. Well, Beauregard uh, had a used 2017. I believe this one is 2017, the Nortrex. Yeah. Um, and that was really, that was only $300 less than the, the new, one. new machine. The warranty is the warranty's still the remainder of the hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a, and, it's and, and then you can buy extended warranty. He, he just sold an extended warranty to cover everything. It was only eight hundred dollars for three more years. Yeah. So now I I I think that that's the best deal. Um, my only question was how we were going to pay for it, as you recall. That is a another question. Absolutely. Um, we are going to have to hit our equipment budget for it, which will put us in jeopardy of finishing the culvert in this year's fiscal year. Cash-wise, I don't believe that's an issue for us. Um, I spoke with Diane, and we believe we have flow that we could pay cash. And if needed, we could borrow money for the machine at we, a later date. We could, yes. That, that was my suggestion, because then we're not getting tied into some finance arrangement with the equipment dealer mm -hmm. when we can borrow money for 3%. We, we have a relationship with... Um, well, two or three banks, right. and we certainly could get a very good rate, and I imagine that they would loan it to us. It would be nice um, <laughs> to, to not borrow the money unless we had to, but if we had to, we can borrow the money six months from now on that machine. Yeah, I think I'm trying to get away from debt service as much as I can. Right. Um, well, I read this, and I agree with all of it, so I'll move that we purchase the John Deere excavator as per the bid, and also purchase the trailer from Clark's truck service for $20,071 as well. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those uh, opposed? Motion carries. The only question I got is, is how soon 
Well, if we're going to write a check, I guess we can buy it really soon. Because <laughs> we we might need it. Yeah, I just call Larry and tell him to bring it here. And then if we're going to write a check out of the equipment fund, it won't take long to do this. We, we could do that. I'd have to go through the what right. I have to go through, but just... Because ask them when you can have it. We we'll used have a check. we used the one last year quite a bit with ice. Sure. You know, and but I'm, all I'm saying, I guess, is if you call him and say the select board approved it, and we're paying for it out of out of our checking account, then he should move the machine down here. And maybe yeah. he could give us two weeks to give him a check. Yeah. We will. We promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better check with Diane. And then what about the trailers? Is we received what fifteen thousand. The, and the trailer, Insurance. you can, we would do the same. Right. Okay. If you need a check beforehand, let me know, and I'll talk to Diane about doing it. Obviously, we have to talk to her for both, but. Mm -hmm. Well, they have one in stock. Clark's does. It's over at Plattsburgh at their other store right now, but. I just call them and say the select board approved buying your trailer. Can you get it here? I mean, there's no problem having it quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, we could get into some pinches here with water problems and stuff and not I, having one is... Don't take this the wrong way, but I hope it warms up so enough so that you do. <laughs> so don't I, to be honest with you, because I'm about sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> and we are going to have some classes about bridges and how <laughs> high they are. <laughs> don't even go there. <laughs> he was in the other day and pretty red-faced about that still even now. Yeah, I don't know about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So you'll you'll contact Larry, mm -hmm. yeah, and Clax. Mm -hmm. Because another reason why they're cheaper is we paid thirty six hundred dollars rental for a month. They gave that back to us if we bought the machine. Yeah. That's why the price is down. I will send a notice to Beauregard and um, Kat. Oh, well, he's probably going to call me tomorrow. He okay. called me yesterday and okay. well, I always we were still going to discuss anyways. it yeah. tonight. And I said yes. And yeah. he said, well, I'll give you a call Friday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, approval of select board minutes from <laughs> January 3rd. 2019 and January 17th, 2019. I move we uh, accept the minutes as presented <coughs> for the Thursday, January 3rd meeting, 2019. I do. Second. Is that here? I'm leading it, trying to remember if I was here. It doesn't yeah. say you weren't. It didn't I, say that I yeah. wasn't, but I don't recognize it. Maybe I was here and just don't realize it. You remember when the... Uh... Me every day. <laughs> <laughs> I can oh, yeah, check. I remember no. Paul my mark. I can check it. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 And now the minutes of January 17th. Oh, I remember the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move to approve the minutes of January 17th. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. They they called me on that ledge yesterday. Um, AJ McDonald or whatever it is. They're bidding on the job and they want to know if we wanted any of it. Is there any so value must, to it? Uh, yeah, I could use it. Well, didn't the, well, didn't the pit want it? Like well, yeah, he wants it too, but this what guy said that there's going to be plenty there. So well, everybody could. I mean, I told them a couple, three hundred yards would be probably a I think they're, they're 64,000 yards. Yeah, that's what he told me. Okay. 
So if I understood that correctly, didn't the guy want it? And his point was it would save us money on trucking if we just let him have it. It would it would save the contractor yeah. money, which he, in turn sort of he's got to get a permit to take it. Yeah, he hasn't done that yet, but he has applied. Everybody's trying to hedge their bets. Um, bids tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. The scariest quite. part of the whole thing is they're only closing one lane of the north oh. lane. I thought you and I, when we retire from the board, we get into blasting. All right. <laughs> yeah. I have a blast. No chance of, no chance of fly rock there. Huh? Yeah. Is that ready yet? <laughs> People yeah. fishing on Berlin. The tractor place is going to start this summer up there, too, huh? So I hear. Champlain equipment. Hmm. I talked with uh, Tom about that the other day because he had the permit thing. That's our road, you know, that goes into Brousseau's pit. It's a class four. Is it? Yeah. Does it come out over Williamstown? It, yeah, but it only goes a little ways there, and it's, then it That's is Williamstown's. Talking. And it turns to Williamstown. What are you saying here, Tim? Well, I just told Tom that he wants to be real careful where they put their driveway in because that is a mud hole in the spring of the year. When they're hauling gravel out of Brussels and stolen out of there in the spring of the year, the ten wheelers are dragging, getting out of there. Well, they have rock to fill it now. <laughs> well, they have rock anyways, but it's just it's yeah. just just the way the land is. Yeah. Because I mean, if. If they go in there, are we going to be liable for that road? We're not for a class four road. Not the class four. But the way the permit showed it that Tom brought up on his computer was is they're going to go into the field right after they come off the apron in the state apron. So if they do that, then we're not going to have a problem. But if they go down to the corner further towards where you go into Brusso's pet to go into there, then there's going to be a problem. Well, I'll we'll have to go over and look at that. I can't imagine how that lays out. Well, I don't think it'd be a big issue for them to well, strike the paper and not hold us liable. Or just take and throw it up. That's what I picture happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was. Tom, Tom says that that it, it, he really would like to recommend to him to pave it. But pave I mean, <laughs> I told Tom. I said, "Well, I don't want to run way up there to that's salt plow, yeah. plow and salt a hundred yards." Would it hold up with those? Yeah, uh, I don't know. The select yeah. board's in charge of roads. They have to come to the select board for things like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Boy, I would try to get as far away from that <laughs> as we can. Yeah. You know. Well, like I say, we can always just throw it up. Mm -hmm. Not this board, but the next board. Right. Throw it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's they're it's basically a cost-saving measure as far as the town is concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't do anything to it now. Yeah. Brusso keeps it. Fair. Yeah. Fair, because if you don't, they're not going to get in and out of there. But now if somebody else is using that road, that's what you're referring mm -hmm. to, right? Yeah. And, and, and I didn't know how where they were going into that field for their driveway into that field. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'd think they'd use the uh, existing road cut if they could, especially on a state highway. Well, they can't get access to that. That's nope. that's the problem. That's yeah. why we can't throw it out. Well, you can't have a private road on a public access road. That's why the mall is the whole deal. Gotcha. That's why we own a hundred yards road. Owns a hundred. I'm see. Fifty. <laughs> right. I didn't know it's a We'll get a small truck to go take care of these pieces. Yeah. Okay. Very small. <laughs> well, I think you got mine. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. I mean, you're talking about the ledge. I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah. Might need a pile of it there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tim. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, board signatures for committee members? Yes, and I should have. Um, what I've got is the appointment you made at the last meeting, David Huber. I need his appointment signed. And 
David is taking Clara Ayer's place, and I wrote a thank you note to Clara. Mm -hmm. You would sign that. Oh, that's all right. Oh, I can't wait. This is a seven-year-old poem. Should I leave it here? Is the ink drying up in it? Nice it has such nice memories. Yeah. <laughs> um, you haven't seen it yet. If you would. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have for that. Okay, let's talk liquor. Yeah. Um, Move to convene the select board and no. adjourn the select board. Adjourn the select board and convene the liquor board. board. There we, go. we have two applications for we license. Have a, we haven't finished the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we both made it. <laughs> I'm pushing you. Okay, no favor. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Say enough. We have two um, renewals re requested. One is CVS Pharmacy, and the other is Dollar General. CVS wants to sell liquor? Well, they, they do. Uh, it's class two, uh, wine and beer, I guess. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know either. I'm going to stop it's down right. the way home. Must be right. You have to get a prescription. Get a prescription. one. How am I? Who am I going to ask all my questions to? When you? Where, where are you going? <laughs> you need stomping ground. And obviously, they've had they've had licenses in the past. Okay. I move to approve both. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So both opposed. Motion carries. Signatures on both of these under approved. Move to adjourn the liquor board and reconvene the select board. Second. I just wanted All in favor? I could actually right. say that. That was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Seems too bad. I've been made fly. It's just my last chance, you know. What do you mean, two more meetings? We could write pre, you in. Pre, you know. pre, pre that is meetings, true. You know, yeah. <laughs> They should do away with pre time meetings. I might. Right. Though actually last year. I'm willing to be surprised. Yeah, actually last year some people. If somebody wrote you in? <laughs> no. Oh. You That's can always amazing. decline. Oh. Pre town meeting and town meeting. I think Anything? town meeting should go the way of the dinosaur. So you yep. think of all the time, money, and effort and energy this country has done so we can vote free of fear and retribution and influence, and yet we go to town meeting, yell at our neighbors, and scream and holler and do it all publicly. <laughs> you missed the U32 meeting. <laughs> yes, the, I did. The uh, consult, the, the, uh, the 20th? unification meeting. Yeah, how did Oh boy, howdy. Did you feel unified when you laughed? There was a unified hate for the state. Uh, so I, I just, brought that whole thing up when I was on the school board 15 years ago. I said, instead of spending the money on the uh, renovation that you take too, we should make them up by your high school and middle school and get there to the high school. Yeah. I thought they were going to write me out of the town on the rail then. Hmm. I can't help but think uh, Act 60 isn't the culprit for all of us. 46. No, 60. When I, you know, what were the seven people in, uh, um, in the court? One person complained. I, I don't even know if it was unanimous. And here we are, broke. Yeah. It is Vermont's Titanic. You have people in still paying for education all over the state, plus their own, plus this, plus, plus. Well, the, the thing of it is, is that they started off with the gold town theory. Now every town's a gold town. It's, I don't see how you can do it. I mean, it's a wonderful idea, yeah. but how are we going to pay for it? And that's why Act 46 is such a struggle, because you're trying to jam a round hole in a square peg, or is it a square peg in a round hole? Either way, we're having the town administrator's report. <laughs> and my report is short. Um, we do, I did put out an RFP for the hazard mitigation update uh, consultant. And that is due back on March 7th. And I would like to involve Chris <coughs> Richardson, who is the emergency management director, in looking at the proposals as they come back to make a recommendation yep. to you. Um, so that is on bubbling. Uh, we have the monthly report for the emergency services, nothing unusual. 
And finally, I wanted to ask you, we've got, well, remind you, we have the pre-town meeting March 4th, begins at 6 p.m. The town meeting is the 5th at 10 a.m. The pre-town meeting is in the school library, and the town meeting obviously is in the um, gymnasium. Um, and then, for those of you that will still be on the board after March 5th, um, did you want to have a meeting on March 7th? Yes. Which is two day, which is the Thursday after the yeah. the meeting. Yeah, so we'll do a scheduled meeting. So we'll do a regular scheduled meeting and yeah, and, and uh, uh, that should take. Okay. We'll have, we can re we can uh, reorganize the board and get things free. We could re you could reorganize, and if there's anything else that comes up after the town meeting, um, should I have Diane do the manifest for that meeting or the pre-town meeting? She, last year, she's usually done it in a pre-town meeting because you're not meeting that week. But since you're meeting on Thursday, I just wait till the meeting. I would think you could yes. just wait till the regular meeting. So yeah. I'm sorry, I missed what time was the pre-town? Uh, the pre-town meeting is at 6 p.m. and the town meeting at 10. 10 right. Where? Um, How long does it go to? Three. No, the no. town meeting? The town meeting. Oh, it's usually 10 minutes. Unless somebody, <laughs> somebody it's two. There's the, uh, sc who goes first? The school school goes first this yeah, year. The meeting okay. usually runs for the town section probably 45 minutes. And that's if hour. somebody gets heated. Yeah. If nobody gets heated, it might be 20. <laughs> because all the articles really? are voted on in the, in the voting. Pre I mean, people have things they might like to chat about, yeah. but. But most of it's in the Australian ballot, yeah. <clears throat> where it should be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to talk on the floor. You get beat up by Bob Warnick or somebody that's yeah. a good public speaker. And why do that? Just go pull a curtain and put a check in the box. Oh, or you can just be quiet. I'm going to throw stuff Usually am anyway. Mm -hmm. We usually don't leave quietly. Yeah. Yeah. Stab someone in the eye with a pen. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think last, the last <laughs> town meeting... Even with the school, even with the school, we, we were done before, well, half before hour lunch. before lunch. Yeah. Well, I'm always concerned about the fire department's not selling lunch. Right, because you know? <laughs> that one's gone. Yeah. Okay, well, I told the Girl Scouts that we were going to be there from 10 to 3. Well, you know. Well, you'll have people there till one thirty. You can stay mm -hmm. till 3 if you want, because okay. the voting booths will be open, but yeah. we'll be there. People will be going voting at 7. 7. And we can be out. I, I, do I need to call the school and ask? Um, I would speak with Rosemary, or if you'd like me to ask Rosemary, but I believe that's mind? what she's going to tell I don't mind. Okay. I believe that's what she's oh, going to tell you. Oh, you mean you'll be there with the Girl Scouts? I think if you you can sell out in the I'll be in the town meeting. My daughter will be, I have oh, a 20-year-old daughter. Yeah, they've had people outside. Yes, yeah. yeah, and I, I think that's I thought about. you meant, I told the Girl Scouts, like, I'm going to be busy. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. So I have a 20-year-old daughter, an 18-year-old daughter, and an 8-year-old daughter. All right. So... Yeah. Yeah, you'll be able to be out there with I, selling cookies. I, I, we'll, they'll be fine. When round table? table? Huh? Round table? Not for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. All set? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, oh, just a minute. <clears throat> We're rushing. Yeah. <laughs> Any executive session, Dana? I don't have any. Oh, oh, you come on. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.